A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. What are the steps you can take in fighting racism? Rhonda McGee is an author and a professor of law at the University of San Francisco. She's also an internationally recognized thought and practice leader, offering insight into how we can change our thinking to take concrete steps in our lives. Today, she presents a powerful theory on how the practice of mindfulness can help us do anti-racist work. In my work as a law professor and a mindfulness teacher, I've seen how relationship-focused, healing-centered mindfulness can support the work of racial justice, which I define as love in action for the alleviation of racism and its harms against us all. To be clear, I focus on racial justice not because other types of justice don't matter, they do, but because we cannot fully address other forms of justice without addressing racial justice. I have been teaching about racism in the context of law and culture for many years. Scientists have been telling us for decades that race, the social construct created to serve the political and economic needs of exploitative systemic racism, is a biological fiction, but it's a fiction that we've been taught to believe is real. And as a result, it has very real consequences in our lives. The painful truth is that we've inherited a world built by systems of white supremacy. We live in these systems and these systems live in us. At the same time, in recent decades, we've been taught that the goal of anti-racism should be to become colorblind, to not see race or its consequences at all. Not surprisingly, then, conversations about race are generally filled with so much anxiety that we often turn away out of feelings of fear, frustration, or futility. And as a result, action for positive change is stalled again and again. Unlearning what has been so deeply ingrained in all of us is not easy. It requires intentional efforts to expand perception, to deepen awareness of how race and racism operate both within and around us, and to develop the stamina for staying engaged. So we each have work to do, and compassionate mindfulness can help. I call this the inner work of racial justice. Of course, the precise nature of the work will be different for every single one of us. For example, the work to be done by a Black man considering Native American objections to the name of his favorite football team will be different from the work to be done by an Asian heritage woman grappling with the systemic reasons why Black men are underrepresented in her workplace. And for people racialized as white, the work may be very different still. It may require stretching to understand just how racializing practices cause harm to people of color, as well as overcoming the feelings of shame, fear, anxiety, or potential loss that may come up when white people think about what might be needed to achieve greater racial equity. So as we awaken to the imprints and ghosts of racism in our own lives and seek to create more racially just outcomes for all of us, we have to take action separately and together. Mindfulness can help us in this as well. Now, mindfulness is often defined as the practice of paying attention in an open, compassionate and non-judgmental way and the way of being that often results. The work of racial justice requires, as we all know, more than just a few moments of racial awareness. It requires an ongoing commitment. And to stay in this awareness as we work for change, even a heartfelt desire to make the world a better place is simply not enough. We need practices that help us deal in an ongoing way with discomfort, sadness, fear, rage, and grief, the strong reactions and emotions that are predictable whenever we turn toward this aspect of our lives. 
And we need places where we can learn, where we can make mistakes and be vulnerable so that we can build up inside ourselves the sense that, yes, we can do this. Sometimes working within our own racial affinity groups and at other times working across lines of racial identity. Mindfulness enables us to hold the complexity of multiple realities and develop the emotional intelligence to respond rather than react to everything we may experience, including the cognitive and emotive dissonances that arise when we come together to discuss our different perceptions of, say, the same set of facts. And mindfulness has been demonstrated to assist us with both minimizing our own biases and protecting us against the threats to our well-being that bias often poses. It allows us to develop the equanimity for staying in the work and to cultivate the fierce power of love to make a difference. And I know something about all of this from my own experience. As a Black woman, Regardless of whatever successes I may have achieved, racism has always been a very real threat to my own well-being. And like anyone else, I've struggled with my own biases. It wasn't until I started exploring mindfulness that I began to reconnect with and actually feel a way of grounding myself in a sense of belonging, despite it all, and tapping my inner resources for doing the work that is mine alone to do. Mindfulness has been criticized for focusing too much on individual introspection and personal well-being and not enough on socially conscious engagement with and for the benefit of others. But here's the thing, true mindfulness is so much more. Rather than rendering us passive, These practices open our frames on reality, allowing us to see relationships between people and things that have been hard to see. Now, when applied to racial justice, mindfulness can lead to the understanding that a racial injury against one is an injury to us all, and that correcting against racism helps liberate every one of us. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Kentfield, California. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Marin. Want to listen to the full talk? Find Rhonda's talk and more at TED.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you next time.